Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with volume seven, yes, of an ongoing series of the complete Telemans, what is this thing? Harmonischer Gottesdienst. That is the harmonic service of God, if you want to call it that. This was the first ever, and it terrifies me that there might have been another after this, complete cycle of cantatas that was published in German for the entire liturgical year. There are 72 of them in this series. Yes, I am not kidding. 72. I mean, they're only about, you know, 10 minutes each, and they're all for solo voice and and a, a obligato instrument, like a flute or a violin, or I think an oboe once in a while. And they basically have three movements each. There's an aria, a recitative, and another aria. And the arias are all da capo arias. So we're talking about a very restricted, limited form. I mean, it really is. But, but that said, um, I, I'm talking about it now because this is volume seven. They're on the Takata label. Um, featuring, let's see, the Bergen Baroque. Here we go. And this is sung by a countertenor, unfortunately, Franz Witz, Witztum, who um, I wish they would just use. It was for middle voice is what these are for. I wish they had used a regular honest-to-goodness alto. I would have enjoyed it more because I'm much fonder of the of the alto voice. Although, although Mr. Witztum here um, is actually quite good. I mean, his voice is attractive and he sings with enthusiasm. I can't understand a word he's singing about. I mean, for some reason, that's partly the acoustic. It kind of swallows the voice. But I actually have here, while, I, while I'm here and I have you, just, just to prove how dedicated or masochistic I am, depending on how you look at it, right? I've got the other six volumes. Here they are on Takata. Um, are they all with Bergen Baroque? Yes, they are. They're doing the whole shebangy. And it's an impressive series. I mean, 72 cantatas, even if the form is somewhat limited. Um, the solo playing is lovely. The instrumental playing is fine. But what really interested me about these, I have to say, the music is charming. It, it, you know, these are made as much for domestic performance as for, um, oh, that noise, the cat's using the litter box, which says nothing about the quality of the music or the performance, by the way. Let it, let's not get carried away. But what really interested me about this, and I have to say, was not so much, not so much the uh, music, which is, you know, what you'd expect, a charming, pleasant, um, and, and often quite tuneful and catchily tuneful, I mean, nicely tuneful, you know, pleasing to listen to. But what really got me was the uh, the texts, the texts, because one of the things that has always turned me off about Bach cantatas, however gorgeous the music may be, and it is, of course, it's Bach and it's fabulous, is is the, the the theological lesson that he's setting to music. It's all about death and sin and misery, and it's disgusting and horrible and bleak and and and, and grim and, and oppressive and just just an awful philosophy quite frankly. And and although many of you have you know said, well, it doesn't matter because the music is beautiful. And of course it doesn't because the music is beautiful. And that's why we listen to them. It's not for their, you know, for most of us anyway, let's put it that way. It's not for their theological um, edification, for example. It's for the glorious music that Bach wrote for these appallingly awful poems. But even, and I know, I know you Bach people are going to say, oh, well, there's like six happy ones. Yeah, I know there's a bunch. There's a bunch of happy ones. Sometimes he celebrates. I get it. But most of them are pretty dismal. And here, they're lovely. The poems are charming. The poems are what I think religion should be about. Hope, consolation, faith. It's beautiful. I mean, you know, I mean, you may not think the poetry is great, but but the message here, let me, let me just go through these. Here's one, um, Evge Kvela Milder Strom. Eternal fountain, mild stream, bottomless sea of gifts. Only from you, gracious Father, we receive all the good that we have. Yeah, right. I get it. You see, I mean, it's it's, it's charming. Um, to all of you that struggle through the cliffs to the top of the mountain, what is the goal of all your effort? A brilliant but 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 nonetheless fleeting boon to keep the word of the highest in mind that brings you the greatest treasure, because you will be eternally blessed. 
thank you. I mean, it's nice to know that someone in the, the German church was not instantly going to hell or talking about nothing but how life is just terrible and dreadful. And, you know, because that's the first one. And the second one here in this set, it's for the second Sunday after Trinity, whenever that is. Um, comfort the tears of the weeping poor with generosity and sweet compassion. Fill the hand of the needy brother. Okay, see, we're getting there. Yes, yes, gather by my sheaves, O abandoned Moabite woman. After the famine, your effa will be overflowing with heavenly fruit when I have been glorified to the, in the eternal dwellings above. Okay, there's another one. Then we got the third one. Um, I have been baptized into the death of Christ so that I might live in him. The leprosy of my sins will vanish here, as did Naaman's leprosy, because this fount of mercy weakens and quenches the embers of hell. Here I take upon myself the name of Jesus Christ. I, I just can't get over how nice all of this is. I mean, you know, sin, you will no longer rule my body because in Christ I am revived. He is mighty in my weakness to foil Satan's efforts. See, in Boscatatus, it would be, Satan's gonna get ya. Satan's gonna get ya. Your sin is just appalling. <laughs> you know, I mean, so, I mean, I, I don't think I need to say more. You understand where I'm coming from. I, I So, yeah, Bach's music may be greater. It's certainly different and more involved. Um, than these simple works for, for home worship. But it's nice to know that when people worshipped at home, it wasn't awful. They had reason to be hopeful, to talk about love and redemption and, and, and you know, yeah. So here we go, volume seven, Telemann's Harmonischer Gottesdienst. Um, you might want to give a volume a try. It's up to you. I mean, it doesn't matter which one you pick. They're all going to sound sort of similar. The, the obligato instruments change along the way. The singing's quite good. Like I said, the tunes are charming. It's, it's, it's not great music. It's, you know, useful music and meaningful in its way. So keep on listening, friends. Thank you. Take care. <laughs>